So in March, Prime Video actually added a bunch of great movies for a change, and they're doing it again this April. In fact, we're almost a week into April, and they've already added a ton of great stuff. Movies like the instant cult hit Terrifier 2. This movie was a major event back at Halloween in 2022. It is the sequel to Terrifier, a movie I've recommended on this channel over the years and had several of the stars on as well. And Terrifier 2 just took things to another level. Theaters were packed trying to see this thing, and it is easily one of the most disturbing movies released last year. And with a runtime of over two hours, it can be pretty exhausting for people who are not really into slasher flicks. But it's clever and creative, and really, if you are a fan of slasher movies, this is going to be one of the top picks off of this list for you this month. If you don't do the gore, though, there's plenty more on Prime Video this month. Movies like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. An epic movie the entire world went nuts for. A movie, honestly, that has yet to be topped in this genre. But speaking of this genre, if you love it, they've added some other great gems like Jet Li's Fearless. I think fans of Jet Li need to see this movie. This is one of the last great martial arts movies he ever did. And then they're also adding Ong Bak, which is a fantastic martial arts movie. This is Tony Jaa's first big global hit. They would go on to make several Ong Bak sequels and The Protector, which was kind of a global release. It's not quite as good, but if you love martial arts movies, Ong Bak is just one that has to be seen. And in a similar vein, they're adding John Woo's big American blockbuster movie, Face Off, a movie that has actually aged fairly well. The cheesy stuff has gotten cheesier and the action has kind of gotten cooler. And the John Woo style of filmmaking here is pretty outdated, but to see it on full display in Face Off with the doves and the slow motion and just all the John Woo-ness is pretty fantastic. And that's before you get into all the Nicolas Cage-ness that is in this movie. But an arguably better action movie from the 90s is Speed, currently available on Prime Video. You want to talk about movies that hold up. Every sequence in Speed is fantastic. From the opening elevator sequence to the entire bus chase, all of the stunts and effects still look fantastic today. Dennis Hopper as the villain is fantastic. And obviously it's one of Keanu Reeves' many action movie masterpieces. This is again one that still holds up and is really one of my top picks on Prime Video for the month. I would also put The Mechanic in a similar category. I'm not talking about the Bronson original, that would easily be one of my favorite picks for the month, but the Jason Statham remake is not a bad movie. Now I will say, it has a very different tone from the original The Mechanic, which I think works to its advantage here. It feels like a completely different movie. You get a great supporting role from Ben Foster. I thought he was fantastic in this movie. It takes place in New Orleans, and again, just has a different flavor than The Mechanic. It's much more of an action action movie than the original mechanic was, and I'm all for that. But don't get a wild hair and try to see the sequel that Jason Statham did. It's easily one of the dumbest movies he's ever been in. And they're adding Top Gun back. They have Top Gun Maverick currently included with Prime Video, if you didn't know, but Top Gun has been hopping around on different streaming services since Maverick came out, and odds are if you wanted to see it by now, you would have. For comedies, they're adding the classic My Cousin Vinny. I can't imagine there's too many people watching this video that haven't seen it, but again, this movie holds up mainly because all of the jokes are not only on point, but they're not topical, they're not cheap laughs, they're solid laughs that are built around the story, making this just incredibly enjoyable no matter how many times you see it. Your brains are laying on the ground in little bloody pieces. Now I ask you, would you give a f what kind of pants a son of a bitch who shot you was wearing? A great double feature this month would be The Breakfast Club and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Two fantastic high school movies from the 80s. I say fantastic, I mean, they are fantastic, but you're talking about two of probably the best high school movies to come out of the 80s, and there were a lot of great ones in the 80s. Fighting With My Family is a fantastic little gem starring Florence Pugh and The Rock, sort of. He's in one scene. They really do kind of make you think he's in the movie more with the posters, but this is actually based on the true story of a family that were all wrestling fanatics. 
and two of the kids grow up to pursue their dream of being in the WWE. Again, this is based on a true story, but it's actually a really heartwarming family drama slash comedy. It's got some great funny moments in it, but it's really well done, has some fantastic coming of age stuff. Florence Pugh is fantastic as always, and Vince Vaughn as the coach is really great in this movie. I'm a big fan of his, and he does something a little bit different as the coach here in this movie, and I thought it was just a really great role for him as well. If you like anything about what I've said, definitely check this movie out. If you've got a family, maybe some older teenage kids, this would be a great watch with the family. For dramas, they're adding Forrest Gump. I don't know that I really have anything to say about Forrest Gump that hasn't been said a hundred times already, but they're also adding one of the best, if not the greatest, drama Brendan Fraser ever starred in. No, not the whale, School Ties. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this movie. It is kind of a classic, but for those that are not, Brendan Fraser plays a Jewish quarterback at an elite preparatory school, and he's afraid to tell all of his evangelical classmates and teammates that he's Jewish. Brendan Fraser and Matt Damon are both fantastic in this movie. It ultimately kind of ends in a place very similar to Scent of a Woman, if you remember how that movie wrapped up. And I don't just say that because Chris O'Donnell is in this as well. I actually grew up in a part of the country where there was like no Jewish people. And I remember this movie being my first introduction into what anti-Semitism looked like. And I still remember that first watch to this day. Some other great dramas include The Life of Pi, which is a beautiful movie, but I have rewatched it recently. It takes quite a while getting started, and once you know what's actually happening here, it's not quite as interesting as the first watch. The Sisters Brothers is a really cool little western starring Joaquin Phoenix and John C. Riley. It's really off kilter, but it's got some fantastic little characters. Feels just shy of being really fantastic, but if you like any of the actors that play here and it's been a while since you've seen an interesting Western, the Sisters Brothers will definitely fit that bill. So I slap you, you slap me back, Raven. So go ahead, hit me, hit me. Jesus Christ. Ray is a highly rewatchable drama, not only because of Jamie Foxx's portrayal of Ray Charles, but because it's full of Ray Charles' music, it's really just a fantastic watch. The cinematography is incredible, and again, the music is just unbeatable. The Aviator has been a longtime personal favorite of mine, but it can be pretty exhausting. Another just beautiful movie, but of course, it's Martin Scorsese, so there's no surprise there. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. The Big Lebowski gets added, easily one of my favorite movies, probably in my top 10, and I would say it's not the only Coen Brothers movie to be in my top 10. Are they gonna you want get... a toe? I can get you a toe. Believe me. There are ways, dude. You don't want to know about it, believe but yeah, me. Yeah, but Walter... Hell, I can get you a toe by 3 o'clock this afternoon with nail polish. Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy would make a killer watch. Gary Oldman won an Academy Award for this one, and when you watch it, you can see why. This is a fantastic spy movie, not just because of his performance, though, but because it's very patient and it winds up tension incredibly well with mostly just dialogue. Whiplash is also available, another top-tier movie that I think is just highly rewatchable because of the high drama. The ending sequence is one of my favorites in movie history, and again, the music is just all top-notch stuff. On April 4th, they're adding the movie that nobody went to go see, Bros, the first gay rom-com. I mean, gay people didn't even go see this movie, so I can't imagine too many of you really care that it's getting added to Prime Video, but it is one of the newer movies getting added this month, along with Ticket to Paradise on the 11th. This is the latest George Clooney, Julia Roberts movie. I have not seen it yet, but if you've been waiting, it's coming soon. Here we go. Which one? There's only one. I see two. Oh, yeah. And then on the 21st, they add a Prime Video original project that looks insanely twisted. It's actually a series adapted from David Cronenberg's Dead Ringers, and it stars Rachel Weiss as the twin doctors. Now, if you've never seen Dead Ringers starring Jeremy Irons, it is a really stomach-turning, <laughs> twisted movie about a couple of twin doctors doing really beyond questionable things to their female patients. The Prime series looks like it has 
not just incredible cinematography, but the sets and locations they filmed on look amazing and kind of creepy. Rachel Weisz is obviously gonna do an incredible job and it will be interesting to see her playing two characters. While I am a big fan of David Cronenberg, Dead Ringers is not really one of my favorite movies of his, so there actually is a chance here that this series could be better than the movie, at least for a lot of us. And then on the 28th, easily the biggest project coming to the platform this month, a new original series titled Citadel. This stars Richard Madden from Game of Thrones and Priyanka Chopra as a couple of spies from the Citadel, this big spy agency that has fallen and everyone's memory's been wiped. It's kind of a big, overblown, almost cartoonish type of spy agency thing, but it's done by the Russo brothers, who are most famous for doing the Avengers movies, and looks like a big, over-the-top, wild spy action series. And that's one thing I'll say about the Prime Video series is they do a good job of packing a lot of action into their series, much more so than a lot of other platforms. So this one definitely has my interest. And it looks like it's only seven episodes, and I'm honestly a sucker for shorter series. I love it when they don't just stretch it out for no good reason at all. If you're maybe in a different country and you can't access all these movies I talked about right now, you might want to consider using today's sponsor, CyberGhost VPN. Now this will also work if you are in the United States and maybe some of these movies are now gone from the platform because you waited too long to watch this episode or you just want to watch something that's not available to you right now, you can unlock all those movies using CyberGhost. They have specialized servers that allow you to access Netflix and other streaming services in a variety of countries and they have vastly different movie and show offerings depending on where you are in the world. It's super easy to use and set up. You do not need to be tech savvy, but they've got 24 seven customer support in case you do need help. And you can set it up on almost any device you normally use to stream movies. Speaking of devices, you can use it on up to seven at the exact same time. And let's not forget, it's a VPN. It keeps your web browsing safe, secure, and private. You need to be using a VPN if you're on the internet today. It's not safe. Without one, you might as well use the one I recommend so that you can unlock more movies and shows than you could ever possibly hope to watch. Go to my link in the video description down below and get a huge discount. It's like up to 83% off, depending on which plan you pick. You can pay barely over $2 a month to, again, just access way more movies and shows than you could ever possibly hope to watch. It's a great deal. Go check out that link in the description if you want to watch more movies and shows than you have access to now. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Prime Video episode, and you will see me on the next one.